Good evening, everyone. This is a guest lecture in the Oral Pathology web series. I am Dr. Mithilesh Chandra, Director of Pathology Consultancy Services. I am a histopathologist and I am CEO of DigiScan, under which this lecture is being organized. The title of the lecture is Role of Digital Slides in online teaching of oral pathology. The digital slides have great role in online teaching and as you all know that online teaching is the future of pathology, whether it is general pathology or it is oral pathology. Online teaching is here to stay and in online teaching digital slides have a great role to play. The lectures in the classroom normally are delivered using the PowerPoint presentation. But now this is being replaced by use of digital slides to show the pathology. And digital slides can, can be projected using LCD projector just like PowerPoint presentation. The advantage of digital slides over the static JPEG images is that the slide can be zoomed in and zoomed out and the various areas can be shown, their relationship can be explained and all the magnifications can be used to show the particular cells. These days in the classroom, wall size monitors are being used to demonstrate the slides to the whole class. And the presentation is made by the use of carousel. But in India, the wall screens have not yet come, but classroom teaching is being taking place in many dental colleges in India and abroad. Digital slides are also changing the way of teaching in the practical classrooms which are now becoming microscope less. Microscopes are being replaced by electronic devices. Now this is the way the pathology has been taught in the classroom. Here we have traditional pathology in which a slide is kept under the microscope and the teacher shows that slide to the student. This is going to be replaced by future of pathology and that is digital slides where the slides are shown to the students on the computer screen and not under the microscope. Now, there were some problems with the traditional method of teaching which have been overcome with the use of digital slides. And the problems were, some problems were related to understanding by the students. The student is unable to see what is being shown and is unable to understand what is being shown. Suppose the teacher has kept a slide under the microscope and he has been asked to see a cell which is a giant cell the either he does not see the giant cell or he does not understand what it looks like. The way is that the teacher will come to every student on the microscope and will try to show the area. It is up to the student whether that student is able to see that cell or area or not or able to understand. And that is one of the main problems of understanding of the student of the slides being shown under the microscope. The second problem is that if the number of students increases in the classroom, it becomes difficult for the teacher to explain to every student. I remember the days when we were students, we were more than 150 students in the classroom and the number of tutors was 10. Each tutor was responsible for showing the slide to 15 students in one hour. It was very difficult 
for the tutor to manage 15 microscopes to go to each microscope and show the slide. This problem now will be covered by digital slides where the individual teacher does not have to go to every microscope to explain to the student. There were other problems which were related to slides. The slides, sometimes they fall from the hands of the teacher or the student and they break away. Or the slides, they fade with storage. Here is the normal slide and here is the faded slide. Now this slide cannot be shown to the student. So there is need to replenish teaching sets periodically. And it is not an easy job. For 150 students in the class, one has to have minimum 75 microscopes because each microscope is shared by two students. Now to prepare 75 slides of each lesion is a horrendous task. Now all these problems have been overcome with the use of digital slides while teaching in the practical classroom. The teacher, whatever he is showing on the screen to the student, all the students have laptops and they are seeing the same structure on their own laptops. Now when he is explaining the various parts of the tongue, the students are seen on their laptops. So there is no gap of understanding, there is no problem of slides breakage, slides storage, etc. So this has made life of the teacher as well as of the students easy and understanding better. The advantage of digital slides is that thousands of slides can be stored in one hard disk and retrieval of digital slides from the hard disk is very easy. So there is no need now of keeping the slide cabinets which are space occupying lesion. A small hard disk can do the work of tens of slide keeping cabinets. Now we have talked about the undergraduate teaching and the use of digital slides in their teaching. Now we come to postgraduate teaching. Now these slides are very helpful in postgraduate teaching which is done in the seminar rooms. The traditional method of teaching the postgraduates is keeping a slide under the microscope of a multi-headed microscope and all the PGs will sit over the microscope and the instructor will be explaining the features. Now, till now it is the 10-headed microscopes which have been produced and the number of PGs is increasing steadily in a batch. Now, in one medical department of pathology, there are as many as 42 postgraduates at a given time. Now, it is impossible to teach 42 postgraduates over the multi-headed microscopes. So, the way out is teaching on the wall screen using the digital slides. Here we have a group of instructors and the PGs who are seeing the slide and the instructor can be teaching the features of a particular given lesion to the PGs using the digital slides. So what are the advantages of digital slides in training of residents? There is no risk of breakage or pilferage of the slides. Slides can be shared inter-institutionally. Rare and interesting cases can be shared. This is a rich resource of learning material as the slides from various institutions can be stored together and it is leading to revival of autopsy pathology training because even if one center is doing autopsy pathology, those slides can be digitized and can be shown to all the colleges in the country. And as far as self-study by the postgraduate students is concerned, this is a boon for them because digital slides give freedom 
to the residents to see the slides. There is no time restraint as the students can see the slides any time of the day and there is no restraint of space. Normally, one has to be in the department with a microscope to see the slide and the departments, they have fixed timings. So, the student has to be there in the department to see and if there are more number of students, the time to see the slides is less as the slide is one and the viewers are many. With the help of digital slides, these problems are solved. Students can see the slides at their own convenience and at their pace of choice. Like it could be a hostel room or it could be their home. And if the slides have been annotated and labeled, they become very useful in understanding. So the student sees the slide and understands the lesion with the help of annotation and labeling. Here is the example how a student can do the self-study of the slides on the computer. Annotation and labeling helps in understanding of the structure like in this case. Here it is showing mucosa and muscle coat and like this we can label the various structures in the given slide which the student can study. There is no need of microscope so there is no need of departmental microscope. The student can use transportable devices like laptop or smartphone to view the images anywhere, any time of the day. A big use of digital pathology slides is now coming in second opinion on oral pathology slides. As we all know that there are many difficult cases where we want to take opinion of other pathologists and this has become very easy with the use of digital slides. Now, the slides can be sent over the internet to various consultants at the same time. So, it reduces the time which is taken to transport the slides and, and opinion can be obtained in hours rather than in days and from multiple consultants at the same time. So, the these digital slides are being used extensively nowadays for seeking second opinion on pathology slides. In primary reporting in oral pathology, for a long time there was a resistance of using digital slides for primary reporting of the cases. But now lately the primary reporting has been, has been okayed by the FDA Department of USA and in USA primary reporting is being done and now many centers in India also are opting for primary diagnosis, the leader being Tata Hospital in Bombay. Now for primary reporting either we can use the traditional PCs or laptops or here we see a large screen which is touch screen which is being used to see the larger view of the image. So primary reporting in the next coming years will see more and more use of digital slides. Now what is the contribution of DigiScan in online oral pathology teaching? DigiScan which has been working for the for promotion of digital pathology in the country for the past 10 years. It has been working for preparation of webinars for education and for presentation of cases in CPC meet, tumor board meet, seminars, conferences and scientific meetings. DigiScan was the first company in the country to give facility of scanning the slides to the colleges and their slides are scanned and these digital slides are then used for these various purposes. DigiScan also does distribution of slides from its digital library to the institutions 
and individuals for e-learning. There are hundreds of subscribers of these slides in India and abroad. Then digitization of the slides for institutions and individuals for their own slide collections or for making their own digital e-libraries. Digital slides are also scanned for research and artificial intelligence as the data presentation by digital slides is unbiased. These are being used ex extensively for quality assessment program and analysis of IHC and molecular pathology. So digital slides have lot of advantages. We will now see the oral pathology slides, how they are helping the students. DigiScan has produced sets of oral pathology for use by the postgraduate students for teaching of BDS students and a collection of IHC cases for postgraduates and quiz cases which are being used for self-assessment and by the teachers for assessing the postgraduate students. I will first take up the BDS slide set. The BDS slide set is made up of six subsets which include general histology, general pathology, oral pathology, oral histology, tooth germ and face development, and ground sections of teeth. Let me first show the tooth germ set. Now when we see this, this set, we see that, that various stages of tooth germ are shown in this set. We start with bud stage. If we want to see bud stage, we have bud stage here. Simultaneously, we are seeing cap stage here. If I go higher on this, we can go to various magnifications. As I said, digital slides, we can go to various magnifications and see all parts of the slides. Now, here we have the surface epithelium and here we have the extension of the epithelium from where the tooth bud is arising. So this is the bud stage of the tooth germ and here we are seeing the cap stage of the tooth germ. Then we want to see the belly stage. We see the belly stage and here we even see very early formation of dentine dentinogenesis and the beauty is that we can see very clearly the laying down of the dentine by the odontoblast. Here are the odontoblast and here are the dentinal tubules and this is the dentinoid material of pre-dentine. Pre-dentine is called when the before calcification of the dentine this is called pre-dentine. So we can see extension of odontoblast from the uh, extension of the dentinal tubules from odontoblast into the pre-dentine. And here above we see inner amyloblastic layer. And here is the stellate reticulum. So these slides are very good in demonstration of various components of the slides, the relationship of one to another. Here we can see the bone surrounding the tooth germ socket. Here, so the tooth germs are protected in a bony shell and that we can see very clearly. So this set demonstrates the various stages of tooth germ and then we have a set of ground sections where various components of the tooth, enamel, dentine, they are shown. Here we have like caries of the tooth 
fit carries showing beautifully the carries formation with the in the shape of the pit and these slides have been labeled and that helps in explaining whatever structures we are seeing and these slides of bds are being used by various dental colleges in the country after that i would like to show this that which bds can has produced in oral pathology now in this oral pathology set there are various subdivisions which include all the chapters of the book in which the various lesions have been described these are the malignant tumors of the oral cavity odontogenic tumors odontogenic and non odontogenic cyst salivary gland lesions epithelial lesions of oral cavity three malignant lesions dental caries and its sequelae regressive lesions bone lesions benign tumors infections and inflammations soft tissue tumors skin aspiration smears so like that we cover almost all aspects of oral pathology in this set for example we want to see odontogenic tumors we have adenomatoid odontogenic tumors we have ameloblastomas we have ameloblastic carcinomas we have ameloblastic sarcomas so almost all conceivable lesions are present in these sets and they are very helpful in ameloblastomas all the variants of ameloblastomas are there suppose we want to go to dental caries and its sequelae let us see those we have the acute abscess apical abscess pulp abscess pulp chronic pulp abscess all the sequelae of caries have been demonstrated in this set we have a very unusual case of pulp polyp which is not easy to find here we have the open pulpitis and there is a formation of polypoidal mass of the pulp which is pulp polyp or also called chronic hyperplastic pulpitis so like that various lesions of oral pathology are being shown in this set then we have the set of very well worked up ihc cases of oral pathology and in this we have about 40 cases which have been shown we have shown one h e stain slide and the immunohistochemistry of the same case to demonstrate the pathology like we have ewing sarcoma here so we will have ewing sarcoma cd99 staining and this is the fly one staining so like that we have very worked up very well worked up cases of isc which help the postgraduate student in understanding the lesion and how to arrive at the diagnosis besides morphological diagnosis then we have a collection of quiz cases where the slide is given with the clinical history without diagnosis the postgraduate is supposed to make the diagnosis and then answer is provided in the next slide here and then it is explained how we have arrived at the diagnosis and in many cases where ihc was done to arrive at the diagnosis the ihc slide also has been given to make sure that the diagnosis given has been supported by ihc so these are the various uh, sets which have been produced by dg scan in oral pathology and these are being subscribed by various dental colleges and individual oral pathologist for study with this presentation i end my lecture here if you have any queries about the digital slides you can contact dg scan on their email or on their whatsapp number thank you very much